Today we explore two songs, the African-American spiritual standing in a need of prayer and the universally known and loved Amazing Grace. Most are aware of the horrific human experience from which spirituals came in African-American slavery. It might raise the question, is it appropriate for all of us to sing these songs? I would venture to say, yes, in fact, it's important. There is so much to learn from these songs and so much all of us can learn from that experience. But what we can't do is own that experience as our own, nor know what it's like to live with incessant racism to the extent that would create slavery in the first place. But singing together today is a start. Let's begin with that phenomenon of the song Amazing Grace. It is likely the best known song that the church has in or outside the church. People who have never had anything to do with the church still know Amazing Grace. And so many cultures know this song and own it as their own, embodying it with musical language of each particular culture. I've heard it sung as a slow, four-part, unaccompanied song, kind of like a spiritual. I've heard it as a four-part, slightly quicker song, as if it were a, a hymn from 19th century British Isles. I've heard it as an uh, early American shape note song. I've heard it as a Peter, Paul, and Mary folk music. I've heard it as jazz, and I've heard it with all-out gospel. <laughs> I've always been drawn over time to the slow, four-part, unaccompanied way of singing this hymn. But an exchange experience I was lucky to have with the people and the choir at Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church here in Minneapolis, and they opened the door to gospel. It happened with me sitting in the passenger seat at the piano, watching, listening, and learning, and entering in when I felt I might have something I could contribute. I'm still in that learning stage. Not so fast, remember the upbeat. <laughs> so why is this hymn so well known and so well loved? I doubt if it's the tune. It began as a Scottish bagpipe tune played as wedding couples left the church. It wasn't even a hymn until later on this continent uh, when it was paired with this text. The text writer, John Newton, was a repentant reformed slave trader. I doubt if that's the reason. I doubt if it's just simply the concept that it sings about. We're all wretches and feel the need of God's grace. We've all been through danger, toils, and snares, and I've been lost and loved to be found. Those are concepts that are in a lot of hymns. My theory, why this is so popular, because it's already so universal. It's already a shared song from culture to culture, from era to era. It's something that we all know and can sing already together and have already connected with. And that is amazing.
There's no denying the reality that spirituals are growing into being an integral part of the plethora of songs from a variety of times, places, and cultures that the church sings. It doesn't mean that we fully own the experience from each of those times, places, and cultures. But through singing together, we can learn and begin to be with. Sometimes we just need to ride on the passenger seat, listen and learn and enter in when we can be alongside instead of on top of. We can enter in ways that we find connecting to our own experience as well. With the helpful reminder to feel the upbeat, this spiritual standing in the need of prayer did that for me. It's a very simple message, but to me this past week, very profound. It's me. Not so-and-so, not so-and-so, not so-and-so, not so-and-so. It's me standing in the need of prayer. And if you're singing it, it's you standing in the need of prayer. So I'm coming to you from Mount Olive Lutheran Church, and we are in the heart of all the recent tragic events that happened. Six blocks south is where George Floyd was killed, a half a block to our north, on our same block even, at least eight buildings were destroyed through riots that went violent, and these buildings burned. When tragedy or inexcusable behavior occurs, the finger pointing starts. As it needs to, actually, justice does need to be served, and we want to do everything we can to prevent these things from happening again and again and again. But when I start pointing fingers, it's important for me to notice the three fingers pointing right back at me. It's me. I'm the one in need of prayer. I'm the one in need of change. And that's the important starting place. This song makes it so simple. And there's a, a freedom to that, admitting that it's me.